bet you didn't know this about the book of Isaiah, did you? And I just learned it today. I'm going to share it with you, and I'll share it with you where I came across this, actually. Pretty interesting. So we go to Isaiah, which is right after Proverbs, or Psalms. I think it's Proverbs, actually. Hold on a second. Yeah, right there. And we're going to look at Isaiah 40, 22, and 22, 18. And there's a method to my madness here. I'm going to assert, I'm in a journey I'm not even looking for a truth. I'm in a journey that will take me closer to God, right? And that might be offensive to some people, or they'll think, oh, it was idiotic. I, I frankly don't care. I have one mission in this life, which is to get closer to God. As a sinner, I am, not 100%. And I don't think that getting closer to man's knowledge is bringing me closer to God if man's knowledge is fake and based on crap science that can't be challenged where we say oh if you're going to say anything against the current orthodox you're going to be banned from polite society and that's not my I, i'm not i don't want anything to do with that so i'm willing to turn over every stone that is if i can find a way to get closer to god on this temporal earth to see what god has in store for me as i go through the world he created for me and if that offends you i don't care i don't this is my purpose in life is to get closer to the lord and the way to do that is to seek the truth. You're never going to know the truth because we don't know what the truth is. Only God knows, and he will either tell us or not. But I'm seeking for his creation to align me in the path more so than I should be going. And I'm now under the conclusion that we have two different, we have two opposing paths, one created by men and one created by God. And that's where I'm even starting to wonder about this thing in of itself. Is this truly created by men? Or was it actually created by God? Because why did they get rid of some of the books? You know what I'm saying? And I haven't done enough decent research in that right now. I'm not, I haven't done. I will at some point. I just haven't done it yet. Anyway, the point being is I do think there is a, you have to choose the path of least resistance. Most people do, which is to fall the path of men. And I, I don't want to do that anymore. That doesn't mean they don't overlap, mind you. But I just think a lot of Christians, unfortunately, they think, oh, science has proven this or science has proven that about our faith. And I, I, don't, I don't know that to be true. I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's not necessarily mutually exclusive. But because science says one thing doesn't make me more attuned to God, especially when the science is suspect to begin with. So anyway, let's read 40.22 and then 22.18. And, uh, and I'll share with you how I came across this. All right, so here's Isaiah. 40, I'm going to highlight that from a long time ago. Um, huh, this is, a, here's a, I have highlighted this. I've had this Bible for so many years. Uh, this is not 40, 20, 22, it's 45, 18. For this is what the Lord says. He who created the heavens, he is God. He who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. But he did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited, inhabited. He says, I am the Lord and there is no other. I have not spoken in a secret from someone in a land of darkness. I have not said to Jacob's descendants, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. And what, again, a lot of us would say is through this book. And I'm not challenging that or I just, it's it's an interesting phenomenon. I don't know if that's the right word. Whereas if that book is, if, if why, why did some books get sent to the, uh, sent to the minor leagues? You see what I'm saying? Why is the Catholic book uh, Bible has seventy three books? Protestant has sixty six. Why is the Book of Enoch? I don't even think the Book of Noah, right? The Book of Noah is not even here. And I don't know if the Catholics have the Book of Noah. I don't know how that works. I just it's interesting. Do you not find this stuff interesting? Why is Book of James relegated to some like backwater? It is in here, but still, it's weird. Uh, gather to that together and come assemble, you fugitives from the nations. Ignorant are those who carry about idols of wood who pray to gods that cannot save. De <laughs> Declare what is to be, who pray to gods that cannot save. Doesn't that sound like, you know, humanity? Oh, Fauci, save us. Science, save us. Declare what is to be. Present it. Present. Declare what is to be. Present it. Let them take counsel together. Who foretold this long ago? Who declared it from the distant past? Was it not I, the Lord? And there is no God apart from me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is no, there is none but me. Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. Ends of the earth, interesting. 
But myself I have sworn, my mouth has uttered in all integrity a word that will not be revoked. Before me every knee will bow, by me every tongue will swear, they will say of me, in the Lord alone are righteousness and strength. All who have raged against him will come to him and be put to shame. But in the Lord, all the descendants of Israel, the person, mind you, all the descendants of Israel will be found righteous and, and will exalt. All right, that's, oh man, just uh, the Bible. I just love it. It's such, it's so poetic. So 4022, he sits as God. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, the circle of the earth. And his people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy, and he spreads them out like a tent to live in. Oh, he sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and his people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy. Isn't that interesting? Then he says, he brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of the world to nothing. Then we're going to go to 1822. Eighteen twenty-two, um, twenty-two eighteen, twenty-two eighteen. Excuse me, twenty-two eighteen. Uh, right here, God will roll you up tightly like a ball, like a ball, and throw you into a large country. There you will die, and then your splendor chariots will remain. You disgrace to your master's house. I will depose you from your office and you'll be ousted from your position. But notice how he said God is enthroned above a, the circle of the earth, essentially. The circle of the earth. But he doesn't say globe or ball. And Isaiah later on says ball. What does that tell you? Does that mean the doesn't that say, huh? Why would why would if the if the Bible is so true to uh globe theory, why wouldn't he say the, he, he sits of us on the globe. He doesn't say that. Why? Does that mean the earth is flat? No. But does not mean you just are interested? It's like, is this interesting? Like, huh, never thought about it like that. So anyway, so let's check this guy out. What Bible says about flat earth theories. Now, this is an anti-flat earther. And I appreciate his writing here because I say, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I don't know what, what the heck to believe anymore. That's okay. I'm on a search to get closer to God. And he says, basically right here, in some translations of the Bible, mentions of the four corners of earth appear almost 30 times. And if understood literally, would not suggest that the earth is flat, but also that it is a square. There is no cosmology in which the earth is square. Not even followers of the flat earth theory claim such a thing. This once again highlights a non-literal interpretation of the phrase. So let's go down, but uh, 100%. But what's interesting here, there are a number of things we can learn from this history. The Bible does not promote a specific cosmology. It is people who put together different passages to make up a cosmology. The fact that it does not promote a specific cosmology may be even a good thing if the scriptures supported a specific cosmology. Uh, ancient or modern, those who believed otherwise would have a reason to renounce the Bible. Some do this today because they learn from an, uh, unreliable sources that the Bible teaches flat earth theory. However, this is not what the Bible teaches, but what bi people have read into it. Some do it knowingly, others not, and others, instead of using exeget, I don't know what that word is, approach, that's critically examined the Bible to understand the context and the meaning of the verses. Uh, that is, they introduce new meanings from external sources into the scripture. At the same time, a reader of the Bible must not stop at exegesis. Uh, I, Again, what does that mean? I don't know. But must always seek to understand what the message of the text is for the contemporary reader. And this applies understanding the right principles of the interpretation for the text that's being analyzed. At the end of this brief review, the main arguments that the Bible supports the flat uh, earth theory, we can draw a sufficiently clear conclusion that it does not promote a specific cosmological model, the earth, round earth, or uh, the round or flat earth geocentricism or heliocentricism and the conflict of a cosmological models between science and religion although having his rich, rich, rich history are still an artificial one see and that's the problem i have with that guy because a lot of people who promote and i i love that the bible according to this guy and i i i got no reason to doubt him is neutral on this but a lot of people they need like the science 
to validate this. And yet we just read right there in Isaiah, he said, ball and circle. What does that mean? All I'm, oh, I thought I had a thing on my, my hand, but it's actually my mouse thing. All I'm saying is throw off the shackles of man-made knowledge. That doesn't mean there isn't knowledge of men. But don't look to men as the source of knowledge. It's not. It's God is the source of all knowledge. And to just sit there and say, hey, men say this. But I can't challenge it or else I forever, again, sent packing from polite society. That is unacceptable to me. And just say, hey, how dare you even think about a flat earth? That is unacceptable to me. I said, no, I'm going to. How dare you challenge this right here? That's unacceptable to me. I'm going to. How dare you question whether or not uh, high, carb high carbohydrates or high fat, high carbohydrates, low fat foods are bad or good for you? How dare you question? No, I'm going to. I'm on a search for the truth of what God wants me to be here. Throw off the shackles of the chains of modern man and say to yourself, I want the truth and I will never get to it until God allows me to have it, if he so chooses. But once you start doing this, you start saying, nobody knows other than the big guy upstairs. The big guy upstairs will let loose when he's doggone ready and willing and able. It's funny because Born Again Bride said today in a comment, which I thought was pretty interesting. About the video where I had a take on, get something off my chest regarding all the uh, the Einstein mania. Uh, he says, you seem to have a very high IQ and are fascinated by creation as mysteries. Uh, since you love reading, please consider spending more time in the Bible than on other reads. Worth getting to know your creator. You can really not know him outside the book. At least that's what Jesus kept saying. Uh, she's a physician, have concluded that many things we take for granted, like how a TV works, are actually impossible and unnatural, that cell phones and landlines transmit voices, that computers do what they do, that electricity can light up a house, and that planes can fly are miraculous. Don't leave out the possibility that's all because God allows it to happen. And I said, whoa, sister. I said, of course it's all possible because God. Where in the world would you think I ever challenged that? And I said, you think I have faith in humans? I said, come on now. And then she goes, no, I don't mean it like that. I don't. I was just offering a different view of looking at things. It's how I see things. Anyway, I, th I find it very interesting that she commented that yesterday. And then today I come across on the Beretaria Times app where someone was talking about, you know, the Isaiah, a new look at Isaiah. And I said, man, that was interesting. So app dot I'll put a link in the show notes. And I think it costs like five bucks a month or something like that. Man, there's so much. Like, look at this. There's Kristen. Our classical conversations community has been such a blessing. It's so encouraging to be surrounded by families with similar values, prioritizing teaching of truth and the joy of learning. It's a beautiful sight these days to watch children play in winter weather with no playground equipment and yet happy as can be. There's so much hope for our future. That's what I'm talking about. And then her, this girl says, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. Our Savior, I can't read the rest, but that's, dude, that's freaking awesome. Uh, we got, uh, uh, you thought you might, I don't know what, what he's doing interview. I'm not sure. But then we got oh, about how to make it. He's making earth, earth shifts, earth ships is fantastic. And then look at my man here. Didn't quite make it to three before 30, uh, but making up for lost time now, number five on the way this year. So we got just people crushing this. So the Beretaria times app is just, uh, it's just a, like, here's this guy's posting his business. I thought I'd share this case. St. Bear's look to relocate Patriot Real Estate is our family owned company in Ports, Santa Lac, Michigan. So I was just talking to a guy. I put the 3D printer to UCS. I made a couple of parts for this guitar project. There's just so many people on here that are just freaking crying. Oh, oh my goodness. Look. <laughs> look at that. Can there be a dog like that? Look at that guy. Oh my goodness. A brown. Oops, what happened? A brown, like a chocolate lab with that kind of skill. Oh, that's funny. So there's good reasons our ancestors developed the skill of mushroom hunting, even the sub-zero temperatures. I just, you learn so much stuff on here, man. Because so many, oh my goodness, so many pe people are just, tonight I made a pizza and some Italian style rolls with leftover dough. I got the obligation. Anyway, uh, nah, it's just amazing. Anyway, so what I was saying is, I, um, like I was talking to a guy earlier today who does wood carving. He, he does like these cutting boards that are freaking fantastic. And I didn't tell I forgot to tell him about app.beretardtimes.com. I was like, man, because, you know, he's a Christian guy. No porn, no negativity on the app, no Facebook's like, oh, that guy, that, no, not like that. It's just all positive stuff. And uh, I've met so many wonderful, the guy who did my, electric, my electrician for my uh, garage, I met here. 
I met a lady up in Maine a co who uh, invited us to come to her daughter's graduation memory serves. Uh, you know, they were having a little bit of a get together after the graduation because I was taking Coley around. I just met all, uh, we went to a, uh, a bear meetup up in uh, uh, LJ, Georgia. Dude, it's just, uh, anyway, point being is if you're on, if you're of a Christian mind, you don't have to be Christian. You don't have to be Christian, but you have to be a positive mindset of the world. You can't be what we call gammas, which are all just trying to shank people. It's just you're out there for positive inspiration. You got a business. You want to meet people who are like minded, who think differently. They just think differently. They say, hey, I, I get it. This is what we've been taught, but I don't know if I believe that. I want to look into it for myself. Oh, just having free thinkers is wonderful. Doesn't make you crazy. It makes you a free thinker. That's okay. How dare you challenge Orthodox? Screw you, man. Of course I'm challenging Orthodox. Orthodox is not good. Doesn't mean it's always bad, but just to blindly follow Orthodox is pure insanity, in my opinion. And I'm not going to do that. Anyway, so uh, I got that different take on Isaiah from uh, someone who's posted on the app.baritariatimes.com. And I said, man, and I had to introduce it to you guys. And if you have a business, you're active in a like a Christian homesteading you don't have to be a homesteader. I'm not. I'm just a dude in a sub suburb. I like to garden. I like to think. I like to read. And I love the Lord. And if loving the Lord is wrong, I don't want to be right. All right, God bless. Links will be in the show notes.